YouTube. This is a rough video of um, potatoes and things. Hey there YouTube. This is a rough video to try to explain how map files work in games. Um, this is one of the big frequently asked questions when people start game programming and I've been wanting to talk about it for a while. Uh, this is kind of a rough video because I'd like to go over everything today and not have to edit together a huge series of videos. Um, but I might do a formal FAQ video later on, kind of like the where to begin guide. Um, but this will probably be after some questions are posted and I can figure out what people have trouble with. Um, anyway, so a few things I'm going to go over are how maps work, 2D tiled maps and non-tiled maps, file formats, loading files, saving files and map editors, uh, screen scrolling to keep the player in the center of the screen, and efficiently drawing maps that are larger than the screen. So let's get into that. So how do maps work? When people think of maps for their games, a lot of the time they're thinking of 2D tile-based maps like what you see for the NES and Super Nintendo. Maps constrained to a grid, and maps that allow you to place tiles and objects anywhere aren't that different from each other. Um, so it's not hard to jump between both. For now, I'm going to give a rundown of tile maps. So a lot of games for the Super Nintendo, or even Game Boy Advance and stuff you might find on PC, they use tile-based maps, but it's somewhat less obvious with um, for some games, it's a lot less obvious because they've made the art so that it looks very smooth and curvy, um, and they've done a great job creating tiles so things don't look so square and gritty. Not gritty like shooter gritty, but gritty like grid. Anyway, um, so for older games, like games for the NES, like Final Fantasy, um, it's a little bit more obvious they're built around tiles. As you can see, the streets, they just kind of end, and then there's this hard edge between them, and um, that's mainly, I think, a constraint of the Nintendo. If you looked at, like, Secret of Mana, they would have nice rounded corners for different things. It would just mean more tiles. So, uh, I think what comes intuitively to people is that a map should be a 2D array with X and Y coordinates. I hope you can see this, because I am not sure where the camera is looking. Um, I prefer not to constrain my maps to a programming data type. If you think about it, should maps, by, should maps be defined by the structure you store them in, or should the data structure that you use to store your maps reflect the maps? Um, so one example of map formats that are not constrained to tiles or a grid would be um, Rayman Origins, which is an amazing game, and if you love platformers that have a flow, go buy it. Um, anyway, the art is really wonderful. It looks like everything is one big background painting. Um, but if you look really closely, you start to see patterns. The maps are made up of various elements of different sizes, but they're reused, scaled, uh, they're scaled differently, tinted, rotated, and uh, more so that the environments look animated and nice. And really, you don't even notice unless you're like really looking for it. And I didn't start to notice it until I had Rayman Origins pictures as my wallpaper, and then I started like looking at all the little details. So how would you store the placement of all of the art for Rayman Origins in a 2D grid? Or a 2D array? Well, you wouldn't. So anyway, I'll talk more about that when we get to map formats. So data stored in maps. There are a lot more to your map files than just what graphic goes where, what tile, what this tile looks like, what that tile looks like. Um, a lot of maps have layers, for one, um, so you could say something like a rock sprite can be put anywhere without having to have rock on grass, rock on sand, rock on dirt, as different images, which might have been the case with like an NES Final Fantasy game. Um, but it's just easier to have a layer where you just have your background and then you just throw a rock there and it, the rock has some transparentness around it. Um, another thing people run into pretty quickly is collision. How do you tell if a tile is solid or not? One solution is you can make all of one type of tile solid, so every time you have a brick wall placed, that's always solid, no matter what, the game knows that brick walls are solid. The problem is, what if you want to have a pass-through tile as a secret? Which happens a lot, you see it in Final Fantasy and other places. Well, then you'd have to have a second brick wall tile that looks exactly the same, but then you would have to tell the engine that this specific other brick wall, which is not this other brick wall, uh, that tile you can pass through, and then it's used almost never 
and the main brick wall is used most of the time. Um, so it'd just be a waste. You'd have duplicate resources, and this one resource would almost never be used. Um, a better solution would be to have another invisible layer on top of your base layer, object layer, blah blah blah, that says, is this specific coordinate solid? And so, um, some map editors handle it this way, so, you know, you build your map and then you go into another layer and you say, okay, no pass through here, 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 and you can, like, not set it for a specific spot where you want the player to be able to pass through. I still don't think this is the best solution, though. Um, I think each tile should have properties, and not just brick wall tile has property of being solid, but brick wall tile number 20 at this coordinate is solid, but brick wall tile number 21 at the next slot is not solid. So, um, another thing you might want to place on the map are flags, such as a warp flag, this is where the exit is, it'll take you somewhere else. Um, or an event flag, when you stand here, something happens, or this is where a starting point of an NPC is. Um, and if you, were if you were storing all of these on separate layers, then you would just have a lot of empty space, for one, because you're not going to have NPCs sitting at every coordinate on your NPC layer. Um, and then you'd have a lot of grids. You'd have the base grid, then you have the object grid, and then you have collision grid, and NPC grid. Um, so the problem with this a lot of the time is just all of the empty data you're going to be storing and have to parse through. Um, so why would you store data for a coordinate that has no data? If you're stuck to a 2D array format then the empty regions have to be checked at least when you're loading the map and then you might store it differently in the program so that's up to you but but I think it's just better to have a list of tiles with their own properties. Additionally, the complexity is only increased when you go to the third dimension, and your 3D maps are rarely ever constrained to a grid anyway, so why would you store it that way?